Let's face it, we all enjoy a little bit of messiness, especially in our music. We can pretend to all get along and celebrate each other all we want, but that's no fun. As a lover of mess, I want to talk about some of the most memorable drama-filled tracks from our favorite pop stars. Janet Jackson, Son of a Gun. I couldn't start off this list with any other song but this one. Featuring the originator of the pop song diss track, Carly Simon, Son of a Gun samples Simon's hit, You're So Vain, to make a legendary combo. The song channels You're So Vain, with lyrical shots being fired at an anonymous ex-lover. It's been highly speculated that the lyrics were directed towards Janet's ex-husband, Rene Elizondo, who she was secretly married to for 9 years. It's never been officially confirmed who the song was about, with Janet saying the song's actually about a few people. Alright, Miss Jackson. It may have been about a few people, but it's definitely easy to see it being mostly about Renee, as they were divorcing around this time period. Especially with the line, Stupid B in my beach house, alluding to the couple's Malibu home that he got as part of their divorce settlement. It doesn't end there, as she calls him greedy, said she'd rather keep the trash and throw him out, asking him who he's gonna lie to. The girl goes in and does not hold back. The song is also weird as hell, not only in its production, but especially in Carly Simon's parts, where she makes some references to You're So Vain, but then kinda gets unhinged near the end, where she talks about clouds in her coffee, asking if he thinks he's a cumulonimbus capillary, however the hell you say that word. This song is wild. I'm actually shocked it was a single, because of how strange it is. But hey, a mess is a mess, and this song is some fascinating mess. Taylor Swift, Bad Blood. Now, we can't discuss messiness without talking about one of the most infamous diss tracks of the 2010s. Taylor Swift's Bad Blood was the fourth single from her blockbuster album, 1989. The song is all but confirmed to be about Katy Perry, who she had a falling out with when Perry allegedly tried to hire Swift's backup dancers and sabotage her arena tour. Oh, the struggles of being a pop star. Anyways, the song was written about this situation, but the video is even crazier, seeing Swift teaming up with her 2015 Pretty White Girl squad, Avenger style. The song and video have gotten a lot of flack since their release, with many commenting on how women shouldn't bash each other so publicly. While I do think the song is one of Swift's weakest singles, I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy the mess surrounding it. A good pop music feud is always fun, and Bad Blood was so melodramatic and over the top that it was impossible to take too seriously. I mean, come on, band-aids can't fix bullet holes. How dirty did Katie do Taylor to make her this upset? And while I see the argument of how we shouldn't pit women against each other, it's not like woman empowerment is about getting along all the time. Taylor and Katie can have a problem with whoever the hell they want, man, woman, or Ticketmaster. Perry and Swift have since made peace, at least publicly, but it's safe to say that we'll always remember this beef. Christina Aguilera, Fuss, Interlude. Leave it to the fighter herself to make an interlude messy. A deep cut off her 2006 album Back to Basics, Fuss is a song written about music producer Scott Storch. Really subtle how his initials are after F.U. in the title. Apparently, Christina was upset he wouldn't work on the album with her after she had offered to fly him out to LA to work with her. The two had worked together on their previous album Stripped, with Christina even mentioning the songs they worked on by name on this track. I love how Christina literally dedicated a whole track on her album to this situation. I'm sure any other artist would have just said something shady to the press and left it at that. But not Miss Christina, oh no. She's gonna give you a whole song saying how much she doesn't like you. When asked about the song, Storch said that it was pathetic that she'd do a song like this, and called the album full of fillers and lame Vegas-like cabaret music. Alright Scott, he clearly felt a type of way about this song. Well, this cabaret album went on to sell over 5 million copies worldwide, so Christina clearly didn't have too much to fuss about after this. Madonna, She's Not Me Alright, I'm kind of cheating with this one, but hear me out. Taken off her 2008 album, Hard Candy, She's Not Me is a funky disco track that sees Madonna calling out an ex-lover for being with a woman who's trying to be like her. The song itself is definitely shady, but not necessarily about anyone in her personal life. However, while the song itself wasn't directed at anyone, a certain performance of it may have been. During her 2012 MDNA tour, the Queen performed a medley of songs, including Express Yourself, Lady Gaga's Born This Way, and She's Not Me. For those who don't know, 
There was some controversy over Lady Gaga's Born This Way, sounding like Madonna's 1989 hit, Express Yourself. When asked about the similarities, Madonna said it was flattering that Gaga would reference her in her music, but said Born This Way felt reductive. For her to sing a mashup of the two songs, and then add in She's Not Me, a deep cut from her previous album era, that seemed pretty damn pointed. Ariana Grande, Jason Song A bonus track on her 2016 album Dangerous Woman, Jason's song is not about a guy named Jason, although it is named after a Broadway composer named Jason Robert Brown, but instead, it's a song about her then-former manager, Scooter Braun. Ariana had fired Scooter in 2015, wanting more control over her career, and the lyrics to the song spell that out pretty clearly. You acted like you bought me at a bargain sale, you don't even care. You focused your frustration on a small detail, blew it out of scale, like my ponytail. Not the ponytail, you're really coming for Ariana when you go after that high pony. What's crazy to me is how the song was written, produced, put on an album, only for Scooter to be rehired as Ariana's manager in 2016, while the Dangerous Woman era was still happening. How messy to have a song dissing your ex-manager, only to have him come back to help promote the album the song came from. The two seem cool nowadays, but this situation is still hilarious to me. I mean, the girl literally said, you used me as a fragment of your grand design, you don't get to put me on your bottom line, and there he was a few months later, getting those sweet Ariana checks once again. The song is pretty obscure nowadays, with only huge Ariana fans really knowing about it, but if I had to guess, something tells me this is probably a certain other singer's favorite Ariana song.